Hi there, Kisama Lee here. What are sellers looking for in a winning offer? If you're curious, you want to watch this video. The market is still fiercely competitive. I'm still working with the majority of my clients who are sellers and we've been reviewing offers, you know, for the last, since the beginning of the year, for the last four weeks. And it's very evident of the offer that is at the top of the pile. So if you have multiple offers coming in, you know, whether it's five offers, 10 offers, 15 offers or what have you, there's usually a handful two or three of the top offers that are right at the top of the pile. And I want to tell you what, what gets the seller's attention. These are the components. Okay. Number one price. Yes. Price is important. Um, if I am working with a buyer, I'm basically telling them right now that if you're thinking you're going to come in at asking price, chances are you're not going to get selected. Your, your offer is not going to be, you know, uh, looked upon favorably, forget about going in under asking, right? But here's the thing you have to go above asking strategically. Um, sometimes we'll see an offer that like, you know, for example, I'm just going to use a number just so we could, um, all be on the same page. Let's say the asking price is 700,000. The offer comes in at 770. Okay. Chances are the property is not going to appraise for that price, which means it's a really good looking offer from the price standpoint, but it's not realistic. And chances are the seller is going to have to come back to the table and renegotiate when the appraisal does not come in at 770, right? So if that's the case, you want to come in at a strong price, but be realistic so that we're not stuck looking at what the appraisal may come in at. I hope that makes sense. Element number two, your contingencies. Now I'm in the Northern California market and the way California association of realtors contracts are written is that you have three contingencies that are part of the offer, right? There's inspection contingency, there is appraisal contingency, and there's loan contingency. Those three contingencies should be at minimal. Sometimes depending on the property condition, sometimes depending on the type of loan that the, uh, the buyer has, if it's like a large down payment, whether it's like 30, 40, 50% down, they might be able to just waive appraisal contingency. What that means is if there's an appraisal gap, let's say the property, um, appraises that let's use, um, the last example, asking price was 700,000. And let's say the offer comes in at 750. They might say, you know what? We're going to waive appraisal contingency. What that means is no matter where it appraises at, we are going to bridge the difference. We're going to make up the difference. So let's say the property appraises at 740. So there's a difference between 750 and 740. The buyer is saying, I am waiving appraisal contingency. And if it doesn't appraise to 750, I will pay the difference and it'll be the $10,000 because they already have a lot of money down. So that's the appraisal contingency that you could waive. The other contingency is the inspection contingency. If the property is in decent condition or there have been already inspection reports provided to the buyer, the buyer may come in and say, you know what? I'll waive inspection. What that means is it doesn't mean that the buyer cannot do any more contingency. It just means that the buyer is saying, I'm not going to ask the seller to repair anything, to give us credit for any repairs. We're waiving it. We're going in and buying it the way it is. Okay. So that's inspection contingency. And the last contingency is the loan contingency. So if the loan is solid and the buyer might already be pre-approved, like desktop underwritten approved, they may be in position to waive their loan contingency. Now that is between the borrower and the lender. The lender has to give that green light. Okay. Now I'm not saying that you're going to be able to come in and do all of those things. Everyone, here's my disclaimer. Everyone's situation is different. I am merely sharing with you what type of offers really stand out at the top when we have 
multiple offer situation when I'm sitting on the side of the seller reviewing offers before I present everything to, to my client who's a seller, I rank them based on all of those elements. Having said all of this, if you are in this fiercely competitive market and you're trying to get your offer accepted, first of all, talk to your real estate agent. They probably are gonna be able to give you some expert suggestions and insight on how to beef up your offer so that your offer would have to stand out, okay? And second of all, you gotta look at the type of loan that you have to see if your loan can really support, financially support, the type of offer terms that you're submitting. That is how your offer might be the winning offer. If you want to learn more about the appraisal contingency, you wanna take a moment and watch this video. Thanks for watching.